Hi, my name is Leanna Williams, and this is Call Me Billy. I'm a recent graduate of the National Theater School of Canada. I'm a theater lover and a storyteller, and I'm here to nerd out with you about Shakespeare and the actress process and everything in between. Today, we're taking a closer look. We're getting up close and personal with our chosen pieces. We're going to be finding its rhythm and learning to dance. Like I said in the episode on definitions and etymology, I like to write out the piece with my own hand on a piece of paper. Um, it's our job to investigate the text for anything it can give us, any clues. Um, so I want you to grab some pens, I want you to grab some highlighters, and we're going to get started. I'd like you to find and emphasize every type of punctuation. A period, a question mark, an exclamation point, those will all signify a whole thought. A period has a sense of finality to it, a statement, a fact. Um, a question mark might indicate what a character is struggling with, what they want, what they're curious about. An exclamation point will indicate urgency or passion or anger or emphasis. Other pieces of punctuation that you'll come across within a sentence is a comma, a semicolon, or a colon. These can be a little tricky, but you're still working within the same thought. A comma could be a breath, could be a change of direction, could be adding new information. Same goes for the semicolon and the colon. Knowing where our punctuation lies will help us better understand our piece and it'll help us memorize it better. It helps us turn a piece that's just like a blur of words into sections and pieces that connect and join and that'll make it easier to remember. Next, I like to go line by line and count out the syllables. We're finding the poetry, we're finding the heartbeat of Shakespeare's words. This is often referred to as iambic pentameter. Let's break this down a little. I am is a metrical unit that's, that's a combination of an unstressed syllable and a stressed syllable. So an example of this could be attempt or above or in love. These are all two, two syllable words, the first being unstressed and the second being stressed. And in like classic Shakespeare, in most, in lots of his sonnets, he used iambic pentameter you'll find that there are tons of these unstressed and stressed words and rhythms found throughout his lines. The other part of this is the pentameter, iambic pentameter, pentameter. And this is in reference to the groupings of these stressed and unstressed syllables. And you'll find them in groups of five penta. And this is just another rhythmic structure. A good example, a good clear example of this is from one of Shakespeare's sonics. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? So his, this one line has 10 syllables grouped into five. And this gives us that iconic heartbeat. Da-dum, 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 da-dum. And um, Shakespeare, well, he didn't always stick to this strict rule. He liked to play. He liked to play around with it. Um, so I find it helpful to mark out the stressed and unstressed words and to count out the syllables just to see where he was sticking to it and where he was playing with it. Because when he deviates from a pattern, it can often give us some more information. For example, in Romeo and Juliet, when the lovers first meet, they're actually sharing a sonnet. They're trading back and forth speaking in iambic pentameter. And this trade-off in this like rhythm, it's almost as if they're completing each other's sentences. And it's kind of, I think Shakespeare was indicating how powerful their connection is, this love at first sight. And we're able to see that through the rhythm and through the poetry. So don't underestimate the information that we can glean from rhythm. Everything on the page is intentional and everything can give us clues into the story and the characters. Now that we've zoomed all the way in and gotten a little technical, I'd like us to take a step back and find where each sentence starts and ends. These are gonna be the main thoughts in your piece. And this really helps me find the logic of it. It helps me isolate 
each thought. And once we've isolated each thought, we can work on connecting them. And this is my ultimate tool for memorization because you can do the hard way and memorize it word for word. Or in a more organic and authentic kind of way, mimicking real speech and real thoughts, you can have each thought connect itself to the next thought, like a normal flow of conversation. It can feel a little obvious, but I do find it helpful. So let me give you a little example using Portia's monologue. The first three lines of Portia's monologue start like this. Is Brutus sick? That's one sentence. And is it physical to walk unbraced and suck up the humors of the dank morning? Another sentence. What? Is Brutus sick? Those are the first three sentences of the monologue. Now, I like to find the connective tissue between those sentences, especially in some of Shakespeare's pieces, the sentences can go on for a very long time. And we even see that in Portia's monologue. They can get very large. So having these connective tissues can help with memorization. Is Brutus sick? And what's one thing you're not supposed to do when you're sick? Walk unbraced and suck up the humors of the dank morning. And now you're not answering my question. And I find that really suspicious. What? Is Brutus sick? So that's just a really sure small example of some of the connective thoughts and tissues that lie between the text that I find makes the thought process come more naturally and um, helps me memorize the text. Now that we've identified all the points of punctuation, now that we've counted out syllables and found the stressed and unstressed words now that we've found the connective tissue between each thoughts we've done a lot of the we've done a lot of the sit down academic work i'd like us to get up on our feet and get into our bodies it can be so easy with shakespeare to get into our heads but really i don't want you to overthink it we are rhythmic creatures and once we get moving and get the text in our bodies, that can reveal the rhythm for us. So follow me. Hey, welcome to the backyard. Okay, so I want you to grab your text and we're gonna be, we're gonna start by reading it out loud, walking in a straight line. And once you come across a piece of punctuation, here's what I want you to do. If it's a period, I want you to stomp. If it's an exclamation mark, I want you to jump. If it's a question mark, I want you to do a little spin. And if it's a comma, semicolon, or colon, I want you to change directions. Grab your piece of paper with your text. Let's get started. Is Brutus sick? And is it physical to walk unbraced and suck up the humors of the dank morning? What? Change direction. Is Brutus sick? Do a little spin. And will he steal out of his wholesome bed to dare the vile contagion of the night to add unto his sickness? Do a little spin. No, change direction. My Brutus, change direction. You have some sick offense within your mind, change direction. Which, change direction. By the right and virtue of my place, change direction. I ought to know of, stop. And change direction. Upon my knees, change direction. I charm you, change direction. By my once commended beauty, change direction. By all your vows of love, change direction. And that great vow which did incorporate and make us one, change direction. That you unfold to me, change yourself, change your half change why you are so heavy stomp and what men tonight have had resort to you change for here have been some six or seven change who did hide their faces even from darkness stomp Okay, 
that was fun. I got a little, got a little excited there. Um, so I just find this so helpful because it, it, you're following the thought. It helps to make sense of what's happening, to start getting it in your body and to, and to start seeing like this huge chunk of text, not just as a chunk of text, but as individual thoughts and questions and answers. It breaks up into smaller pieces and it makes it a lot more easier to comprehend. And when you comprehend it, your audience will comprehend it. Like if you took out half of these commas, it would make no sense because there are so many commas in here and each comma gives you, gives you a little breath to, it gives you time to think because your character really is thinking. Your character is saying this for the first time and having these commas there gives you that second. For example, and upon my knees I charm you by my once commended beauty, by all your vows of love and that great vow which should incorporate and make us one that you unfold to me yourself, your half, why you are so heavy. That was me saying it without commas. And if you, and if there were no commas, you'd just be like spewing it out of your mouth and you, no one would catch the meaning behind the words that you're saying. And no one would catch you, the character, thinking and switching the sentence and discovering the right word that you actually need to say and, and finding, finding like the perfect way of expressing yourself. So by adding in those commas, it makes a big difference. And she's thinking, oh, upon my knees, she goes to her knees. I charm you. What do I charm you by? By my once commended beauty, comma, by all your vows of love, comma, but that and that great vow which did incorporate and make us one. That, why, why, why am I bringing this up? That, that you unfold to me, and who am I? I'm, I'm yourself. I'm your half. Why you are so heavy, period. So you can see how she twists and turns throughout that sentence to to discover what she wants to get at, to, to really express what she wants to say to Brutus. It's really effective. And that was all accomplished just by standing up, getting it into your body, doing a little dance, being a little silly, spinning in circles and stomping your feet. And it also just serves to get you excited. I always get excited when I'm up on my feet. Thank you so much for dancing with me. It can feel so good to start getting the text off of the page and into our body. Next episode, we'll be talking about imaging and dropping in. And this is really useful for our imagination and for deepening our connection to the character and to the world of the play. I'll see you so soon.